I can't remember the last time we had this many people in board meeting. And it is so nice to have you here. Um, the board is pressed 100%. And we have, um, uh, we have our superintendent, Ben Williams, and our principal, Shelley Durinzi, is over there. And um, our facilitator, Mike Washburn. Mike, would you raise your hand if you um, and I have uh, something that I'd like to read to you before so that everybody understands um, where we're at as a board. Um, the Central Lake Board of Education very much appreciates parent, staff, and citizen input at our meetings. In the past several weeks, we've received correspondence from the Central Lake Education Association and a lot of questions and comments from citizens. And while the board policy and governance procedures severely limit the immediate response that we can make at board meetings, I want you to know that we really do take comments and statements that you're making seriously. Um, and um, I know there's been a lot of rumors circulating in town, and hopefully tonight we can take care of some of those. Um, since arriving in Central Lake in January of last year, Mr. Williams has taken his role of superintendent very responsibly. Immediately upon his arrival, the board and superintendent engaged in goal-setting sessions. Regular evaluations last year and this year have been very positive and constructive for him. Um, ben continues to be very active in school and community events and has spent considerable time studying and evaluating our academic program, wanting to make sure that student achievement topped the list of priorities for us here at school. It is no secret that funding challenges have caused all school districts in Michigan to make significant cuts to programs during the past several years. Following the board's direction, the superintendent made recommendation that kept cuts away from the classrooms as much as possible. He faced multiple hurdles following new state and federal mandates while moving the curriculum forward. In other words, doing more with less. As his first year transitioned into this one, the challenges continued to compound. Dollars from Lansing continued the downward spiral, creating the perfect storm for the superintendent and the board. At the superintendent's evaluation on March 11th, a number of teachers were present and delivered a position statement to the board. To assist us in reviewing several concerns, the board utilized the expertise of Dr. Michael Washburn that I introduced to you. He's an educational consultant, and he has facilitated the superintendent evaluations and searches in Central Lake for the past decade. Last week, Dr. Washburn met with 20 staff members in private meetings to get feedback on the strengths of our superintendent, as well as suggested areas for growth. This process was supported by Mr. Williams, and during the closed session tonight that we'll have after this meeting, Dr. Washburn will share the results of his meetings during the follow-up evaluation for the superintendent. Board members are very aware of the rumors that are circulating in the community. While some of these revolve around the personal life of Mr. Williams and his family, we want our community and staff to know that while we support the work of our new superintendent, we also understand the importance of communication with you, and we understand your concerns. Because of this, I'm going to turn the meeting over at this time to our superintendent, Bill Ben Williams, who wants to make a statement to you before we entertain comments. Thank you, Sue. I, um, hopefully mine will be shorter than that, not that that was too long, but I, I actually didn't uh, write anything down. Um, I so did because I don't organize well. <laughs> I'd, be t I'd be going on for the next 15 minutes, you know. So, go ahead. Thanks. Um, since coming last January, and, and even before that, as I began my superintendent search, I was looking for a small town community much like this one, and I found it. Um, I enjoy the town, I enjoy the environment, I enjoy the pace of life, I enjoy the quality of life that this town and our community bring. Um, so I moved here, and I began my work. And I was discussing this great town with my family, who's still not here, but downstate and I was traveling back on weekends. Um, and I said, what a great place. This is where I want to be. This is where I want to continue my career. And here I am. Um, now, as we fast forward to, to present time, I moved here in January. I enrolled two students 
my two sons uh, in mid-February of last year, and then have enrolled a third child, uh, a young lady we're recently guardians of, who's a senior, uh, into the district. And two children have been here for over 13 months, and one relatively recently since January. Um, since March, uh, two students are, two of mine, are not in the district for personal family reasons that we're dealing with at home and working very diligently as a family to deal with those. The unfortunate reality is, and I've heard it out in the community, and I know members of the board have, that this in some way is supposedly a condemnation or uh, my not having faith in the school or in the teachers or in the district. Couldn't be further from the truth, but unfortunately that's some of the discussion that's in the town. Um, the fact of the matter is I wouldn't have brought children to the district if I didn't have faith in the teachers. I wholeheartedly support the teachers. I've worked diligently, uh, and I hope they would affirm that with them to make sure that each and every teacher we have is here and is here next year. We've really worked hard to make sure no cuts hit the teacher ranks or any ranks at all. And that although change is hard, and I have brought some change, and I have been pushing and trying to innovate and develop some new ways of doing business for the benefit of all of our children, that the realities and the pressures of this job are, are pretty tough. And they do hit home. And unfortunately, they're affecting my home. And so we're working on that. But I also wanted to set the record straight that in no way is this in any way a doubt of mine or uh, a lack of faith in any teacher. Uh, I wholeheartedly support the teachers' grades pre-K, and we're working with that program all the way through 12th grade. And it is my sincere belief to continue to do so. Uh, so that's my commitment to the district, and I appreciate everyone's understanding as we work on these uh, family decisions as a family, because you know these are trying times in my household as well. But thank you for being here, and I appreciate you coming to listen to me tonight. And uh, that'll be that. That'll be my statement. I'll turn it over to to Sue and the rest of the agenda. Thanks. All right. Now is uh, time on our agenda for guests and public comment. Um, because there are so many of you. Um, we will we'll limit public comment to three minutes, and if you would uh, tell us your name before you, you start. Um, I'll start. Gary Mortensen. Um, I was here the, uh, last week with the board, too, so you guys all already heard what I had to say, but a lot of these people didn't. I'm not going to reiterate the whole speech again, but um, unfortunately, nowadays in our educational systems, our high schools, our school elementary, and other school systems in Michigan, we're in a mode of uh, competition competition to draw people to our district. Many of our schools in our area, as you see, are advertising on TV. They're going to that extent and selling themselves to everybody. Every student that we get to our district is more money. The more money means a little better job we can do, usually, and retain more staff and teachers and personnel. So a real big concern of mine when it came to the meeting last week, and still is my concern, is the attrition of losing some families, not just families, but students, from our district. Families are still be here, but when they pull their kids to another school district, there's something wrong. And I really think we have to look at the numbers real close, but I think we've lost more than we've gained, I'm pretty sure, this last year or two. And my real, my real problem, guys, is it's pretty hard for me to convince these people, stay here, we got a great district, when they say to me, someone that runs our district doesn't have their kids here. What do you expect out of me? I'm going to run, too. That's all I'm going to say right now. It's a short one. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Yes. Um, my name is Kathy Ann Wright, and I'm going to get emotional. That's me. Every time I speak, <laughs> you'll see it. I brought my kids here from another school district. I was an employee of that school district and lost my job because I did that. I was a good worker. I love the kids. I love these kids. I love this school, and I'm an advocate for Central Lake, but I'm also an advocate to do what's right for your own children. And I love this community, and I know this community has the power if you guys stay together, stand together as a community, and fight to do what's right, even for Mr. Williams' family. Do what's right for every kid, whether it's to be this school or to be at another school. Do what's right for the kids. If his kids are better suited in another school district, let them go, and gladly let them go with a kind heart. Gladly accept all the kids that come from any other school into this community like you did mine, because I love this school, 
I love this community. I love the people here. I believe in you. I don't think you do enough advertising to show the world what kind of community you guys have. I give anything. If I, you know, we built a house in Bel Air. I can't pick it up and move. But I love this community. And that's what I got to tell you. You guys got to believe in your community. Do the right thing for the kids. All the kids. All the kids. Thank you, Kathy. Yes. Um, Ryan Newton. Uh, I, this, I don't know if this is a question and answer session necessarily, but uh, I, I think the board would probably agree, and Mr. Williams would have to agree. This kind of looks like it's sending the wrong message, or at least a poor message to the community when when the student doesn't attend the school. Now, whether it's a personal uh, matter, I understand that, but in a public position, and particularly <coughs> the superintendent position, I think that uh, I, I guess I don't, I'm not in any position to ask for, but a little more understanding of what's going on here is where, what, I, what I'm looking for. I, I understand it's a, a personal decision, but I, I just, I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around how that doesn't send a horrible message to your community. I understand, thank you. Um, like I said at the beginning um, in my statement, uh, we're, we are very limited to the amount, that, you know, the responses that we can make to you, but we are surely listening. Yes. Hi, Jenny Montgomery. Um, I have two kids here. I've grown up here. Kindergarten, graduated. It's not just Ben. I mean, I like Ben. I see him up at the school. I see him part of it. Shelly, doing a great job. Teachers, doing a great job. But there's also been a lot taken away. Recesses, art, music. Those are the things our kids need also. They just can't be in a room learning, learning, learning. They get fidgety. They need to get outside and be active also. And when other schools offer that, you know, it's hard not to look at that and say, well, you know, we had to do what's best for our kids. Thank you, Jim. Yes. Ken First, the, the fact that you say you can't give us immediate response, <clears throat> my answer would be, why not? You know, and you don't, I know you're not going to tell me that, because don't, don't think any of us are fooled into the fact that you don't know what the issues are, okay? They, they've been at the height of every talk in our community since this happened. So to sit there as a board and tell us you can't respond to us makes me think, are you even the slightest bit concerned that you didn't do your homework to have answers for us, okay? Because every one of us here knows the issues. So I, I, I think that looks horrible for you as a board. I, I really do, okay? I, you, you said you've heard rumors around town. I, I think you should have addressed those rumors right now because I can say rumors, who knows what you are talking about. But that's pretty vague, okay? If you knew there were rumors, you should be addressing them right now at this meeting. And some other things that, that really bother me. I was told that it was a known fact that, that Ben's children had been homeschooled before he was hired here. If that's true, I certainly would like to know why you didn't address that beforehand. And, and, and nobody take this personal, but I agree with everybody else. Uh, if there's personal issues that allow it that you cannot have your children in our school system, I can understand the personal issues. But I also think that means that maybe you shouldn't be the superintendent of that school system. And I don't think there's any other way around that. I question the fact, and if this isn't true, you can let me know that, that right after his contract was signed, he removed his kids. So my question is, if while you were going through the contract negotiations and signing the contract, did you discuss the fact that his kids may be pulled out within the next few days because of it? I mean, none of this was addressed to the public before it happened, which I think looks bad, okay? It just is terrible. The other thing that bothers me is that I've, I've been told that there are teachers within our system that say they haven't had a teacher evaluation done in years and you're bound by law to do so. Yet you put out reports saying you have and you give 100% of our teachers an effective rating. Have the evaluations been done or not? And if so, why are teachers saying they weren't? Uh, you talk to other school systems. Our school is behind, they say, on technology. Incredible compared to schools our same size. So once again, I'd ask you if that's the case, why? It, it, it's common knowledge that Cal's retired. You want to place, replace him with a full-time position is what I'm being told. How are you going to bring technology up to date with other schools? So 
I just, it just amazes me that you knew you were going to get a large group of people from the community here, and your first statement was, you're not going to make any responses to us at all because you're not allowed to. So, I just think you can do a much better job as a board. I know these are hard times for everybody, everybody out here. So I hope nobody takes anything personal, but I think as a board, you really need to get it together and address the issues immediately. Because so they're not, they're not going to go away. Well, we really appreciate the fact that uh, you're all here tonight to share your concerns with us. Um, you know, you say everybody knows what, uh, what each one is. You know, there's a lot of rumors out there, and what we're going to try and do is clarify what is rumor and what is fact. And we hope that we can do that. However, we're not going to sit here and do it tonight. I think, I th personally, I think that's terrible. You know there's rumors out here. You know we're all here tonight. You know we have questions. You know we have answers, and you're going to refuse to answer them. Bad. If you know there's rumors, you should dispel them right now. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. My name is Tina DeForest. I have an eighth grader and a junior in the school. They've been in Central Lake School their whole school life. I've been a faithful volunteer their whole school life. And I'm not necessarily here to say anything about Mr. Williams' personal life or his children's schooling, but that I've noticed a decline in the quality of education that our children are getting, just from my one son who's a junior to my one son that's an eighth grader. And it's quite alarming to me. There's been times where I've considered moving my children to another school, and I didn't want to do that, and they didn't want to leave. They love Central Lake schools. I have a personal relationship with all the teachers, a lot of members on the board, and I'm very upset at where things are headed for the kids at the elementary school. There have been many cuts that are not certainly not uh, the board's fault, but um, it's important to me that the quality of education be maintained with these cuts. Um, and, and from my personal experience and my observation, um, being at the school and seeing the education and being a big part of my children's education, I do notice a, a significant decline in the quality. Larger class size, um, you know, when my one son was in elementary school, they had two or three different teachers for one grade. They changed classes. You know, the, of course, she mentioned the um, removal of some of the school programs. I also noticed when I'm in, enrolling my son for the next school year, the lack of electives that these children have to pick from. They're mainly picking from qualification classes that they have to take that are, that are subject related. They don't really have anything they can do that is fun to do. They are limited with the amount of time um, and classes and choices that they have. Other schools, some larger schools, some not, have more staff to afford more selection for the kids to pick from for their electives and stuff in their in the higher grades, specifically high school. And that's pretty much all I had to say. Thank you. Again, you know, all these people are here mostly because word of mouth. If people weren't telling everybody, no one would know this was going on or that you guys do want our opinions. Is there a better way um, you guys have a Facebook, an email page, something that we can get concerns to you guys so that, you know, if we can't be here or we don't know about these meetings, that you guys still know that we have voices and we do have concerns. I mean, is that something that could be made? We could look into that. That's an interesting idea. So do you want to remind everybody about our web page and that our contact is always Yeah, go ahead. And, um, Maybe some people are aware of the fact that on the web page we do have a board page that has all our contact info. Unfortunately, it wasn't up to date, but I just put a message out to make sure that all of our contact info is up to date on that page. That is always available. You can go on the web page and look up our emails and our phone numbers and send us comments anytime you wish. Does that kind of talk about what is being talked about here or? I you know, mean, inform us of anything. as a board member, if you have something to say, mm -hmm. you're more than welcome to call me. Okay. I, I will talk to you. And that's pretty much across the board, any of us. <coughs> I know a lot of you have in the past couple of weeks um, talked to one or another board member. And um, we really appreciate that. And like I said at the beginning, we may not respond the way you want us to at that moment, but it's not that we're not responding. 
It's not that we're not taking into account what you're saying. Well, how do we get the responses? Did you guys post something somewhere and say, from this board, these questions came up, so here's the responses to these questions. How do we, do we come back next time and you guys will have answers then? Or you just say you're not going to respond. Will we ever get responses? Well, and you can get responses, sure. Um, you can you can talk to one of us about it. You can well, see we're Mr. Here asking you now. You can see Mr. Williams and, and come and um, talk to him. Well, wouldn't it be easier to address 50 of us right now as opposed to 50 of us one-on-one? -on -one? Can, can I just say something, sir? Sure. One, one thing, um, we're, the reason we're having this meeting tonight was um, because of concerns that were brought to us on Monday, uh, last our last meeting. So therefore, we've been working on this. It may not seem like it, but we're working behind the scenes. And Mr. Washburn is here directly because of the concerns and the things that have been brought to our attention. Unfortunately, because this is a personnel type matter, it is very, um, it's not public knowledge, some of the things that we've talked about and we've discussed, we've had closed session meetings. So unfortunately, even if we would like to be able to respond to some of these issues, they are personnel issues in some instances, and we do legally <coughs> have to be very careful what we say in a public forum. And I know that each, any of you that have jobs can understand that, um, and if it were your family, would certainly want that to be the case as well. We respect every person that's here in our community. We love you. And we just feel that we have to do things in the way it needs to be done. There's a chain of command. There's a way things need to be worked through. And that's why Mr. Washburn is here. So, um, you know, I do understand the frustration, and I'm sorry and for that. And Tracy, I'll add that we are still in the process. So right. the meeting we're yeah. having tonight is all a part of this process mm -hmm. and brings up some of these concerns that people are talking about. Maybe not the general concerns about the quality of education per se, but, but it's the, the rumors and the concerns. It's, it's, we're still in that process, so it's hard to get responses at this point given that we're still in the process. We want to be fair. Yeah. Show me. Show me one. Um, I guess going back to what Jeff was asking is um, the, the things that you can address to us, when and where can we expect that to be addressed? Again, other than you know, each one of us knocking on his door. Is there an easier way, is there another meeting that we could have where you could address the ones that you are allowed to? It's a suggestion that, that we certainly would take into account, yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing is just at regular board meetings, a lot of the solutions will come up. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, if we, if we had more people come to our board meetings. <laughs> we need to know when they are. Uh, they're the same every month. That's the regular meeting. This is what they call a special meeting. Okay. So, if, you know, for some of us that might be busy in our lives and forget that, can there be something sent home in backpacks or something that, you know, a, something goes out on the web, web page, this is meeting this month? I mean, just because, you know, a lot of people forget about things. And it's not always just, you know, the bad issue we need to talk about. It's kids and, you know, the teachers and that. That could be as simple as just posting it on a school web page, or a Facebook page as well. I mean, it's something yeah. somewhere to watch. It is posted on the website. Yeah. The calendar, it's on the calendar. There's a board calendar. Yes. Hi, Dave Newcomb. I've lived here for about 25 years. I've had a, a son of my here in 92. Um, I have very strong, positive feelings about this school system. But what I see tonight, I have no clue what these, all these details are about. I don't have children in this school. I know a lot of people around town. I'm in a room where I see peace, love, love your fellow brothers, and it seems right now, we are at a crossroads of <clears throat> making this an adversarial relationship or making it a cooperative relationship. I see the board up here saying, we have a web page, we have a web page. Could I have a show of hands? How many people <coughs> use social networking? How many people go directly to a school web page? And have you been doing that consistently or just in the last week or two? Is this what I'm looking for something in particular? Yeah, but the, the thing is there, <coughs> social networking is bringing together 
Arabs and Israelis. It's bringing peace into or great change to great parts of the world. Um, I don't think that you can just slough off and say, we have a web page, you can go there. <coughs> you, have to, you have to throw a little more innovation out and get with the times. If we don't get with the times, like Gary said, we're not going to get with the money. If we don't get with the money, we don't get with the education. It all, it's all tied together in a nice big circle. And if we all cooperate and we all are honest with each other, I think we'll go great places. Thank you. I, I think we will. And I think that that's why we're all here. You know, our focus here is what's best for kids, for all of us. We're all looking at the same goal, so. And, and you're helping us tonight. You know, we're up here as the board. We don't know it all. And we know a teeny little bit, maybe, but, you know. Um, we appreciate the input that you have. Yes. You, you said you you go you discuss personnel matters in closed session. I, I just wonder if you get legal counsel before you do that, because from everything I've learned, the fact that you do go into closed session is way more limited than the fact that you can't. So I, I hope you're not giving the school or anybody in trouble without truly checking what you are allowed to discuss in the closed session. And a personnel evaluation is one of those few areas that. Not right. according to the Attorney General, and both his opinions on it, but you are not allowed to discuss an administrator's personal evaluation in the law session. Would disagree. The Attorney General would. I'm, I'm just saying, I just don't want the school getting any trouble. I'm not saying I agree with it, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying, I hope we don't get in any trouble violating open meetings acts. Yeah. 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 I'm Holly Mortensen. I just wanted to say um, thank you to everybody that came out tonight. Um, I talked to many of you personally, and I just really love that you love the school as much as I do. Um, you know, like my father-in-law said, you know, my general concern is what the outlook, what it looks like on the outside, you know, as well as what it's, what's happening on the inside. I, I do think it looks bad when we've been told several times that we're the laughing stock of Antrim County because our superintendent's kids don't go to school here. I love Ben, I think he's doing a great job. I don't want anybody to misconstrue that. But I feel like Ben's kids not coming to school is no different than me having a business in town and taking my, and when Gary dies, taking him up to Hastings Funeral Home, which is the next town away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that. <laughs> I'm just saying, don't I mean, you mean if he dies? Yeah, I'm just saying when he does. I'm just kidding. I, I just feel that strongly about the leader. I mean, if I don't believe in my own business, how, and I get that there's personal stuff going on. I mean, we have personal issues. You know, I want to beat him up sometimes. I'm just saying that. You know, if the church that I go to, if the minister's wife doesn't attend, why would I go there? Does she not believe in her own husband? I just, it's just so hard. And I know he's been doing a good job, but I just wanted to say that it's really hard for me to understand that you can run a school and make it work and have things happen, but the kids can't go here. So. And I appreciate what you're saying completely. And my, the reason that my kids were here was a personal issue even though everyone thought it was about sports it wasn't and it was a very harmful situation to my son and it's something that I don't need to share with everybody but it was something that was affecting my entire family very very much and there's still lingering effects today from the situation that was happening and I guess my response to that I completely understand what Holly's saying and I know that you can all look at me and say, I'm not, I don't live in Central Lake. You can say that. And it's true, I don't live here, but my heart is here. Um, you live here. <laughs> I, I do, in my heart, I, I, I do live here. Um, and I, I think it's our response. I think it's how we respond to the community. I mean, I've seen hatred amongst schools. It hurts me. I see it. You put our kids together and our kids will hang out. They like each other. We adults have to be the role models, all of us. And that means when somebody says something to us, we say, we're supporting that man sitting over there because we believe in him, he believes in us, he's doing what's best for what, his kids. That's not our business, what's best for his kids. What's best for his kids is his heart and what's good, good for his family. 
That's what we got to support. What's good for our families? My family is, did well here. My family loves here. And that's what we got to show this world, is that this is a place you want to put your kids because we love each other. We support each other. We do what's right for our families, and we're going to support them, even though his kids might not be here. We support him because he's taking care of his family and doing what's right for his kids. And that's what the school is all about. School's about our kids, taking care of our kids and doing what's right for our kids, number one, over anything else, anything else. It's your kids and your, and your heart of where those kids are and where they need to be. It might hurt our feelings. I get that. It might hurt our feelings that, our, that their kids aren't here. But if we talk to the kids, do we really want to do what's best for his kids? My answer is yes, I do. If it means it's not here in our school, I want what's best for his kids. I want what's best for the kids in this school. Because if it means his kids aren't in this school because... The, the something, I mean, it might not even have anything to do with it, but if it did, if it's harming the kids in this school to have them here, then why would we want them here? And you just got to look at the whole picture, and we just got to stand together as a community and say, we're going to do the right thing, no matter what it looks like to you, because we don't care what it looks like to you. We know what it looks like to us right here. And we're going to do the right thing for this family and that family and that family and that family. And that means we're going to love each other, we're going to stand up for each other, and we're going to support each other. That means we're going to get together and we're going to make the art classes, whether it's moms doing it after school or music classes or whatever. But this school, you guys got to understand what you have in this school. I was at Bel Air. I know what they have. They don't have this. They do not have this. You have it. Look in your own backyard for what you got because you got it right here. If you want to go test the water somewhere else, go ahead. It's right here, I'm telling you. Believe in what you're doing. Continue doing what you're doing best. And I'm telling you, it's loving kids. You love my kids, and I love you for that. You love my kids. They came here. You treated them nice. The teacher said, I'm glad your kids are here. These parents on the sports teams were nice to me. They were nice to my kids. Rise up to that, guys. Just rise up to that. That's all I'm saying. It is about the kids, and how do we get them better? How do we have our teachers teach them, the ones that are excelling, the ones that are in the middle, the ones that are down here not doing so great? How do we reach them all without sacrificing our recesses, our, you know, our arts, our crafts, our, all that, the music? They are entitled to that. They deserve it. They work hard. You know, they are held every year to go higher and higher. Are our teachers being, you know, graded that way too? I mean, it's just, I, I need more. I need more for my kids. And I want to stay here. We've been here all of our life. But if it can't work, it can't work. i got to do what's best for my kids. might not be what's best for everybody's kids, but they're mine. One more thing, uh, a couple people have said it, you don't know what you've got here. We moved our kids from a large city, inner city school. The teachers left the building before the, two, the students were allowed to for safety. Parent-teacher conferences were unheard of. There, <clears throat> between classes, there were as many kids running and screaming and fighting in the hallways as there was during between classes and during classes. You couldn't tell the difference. The head of security flat out lied to us. Just bald-faced lies. Um, there was just a, a, a lot of things that you, it is like surreal in these big inner city schools. You have no clue how beautiful this whole situation is. And there's big mountains, I think, being made out of molehills. I think Mr. Williams is <clears throat> doing what's best for his family because that is the most important thing. That's why God put him here, to raise his children and create a family. That's it. Um, my name is Alyssa Schaefer. Um, I grew up here. I coach here. I might have a few board members on the board that I'm related to. Um, I've also coached a couple kids, um, parents, kids. 
on the board. I graduated with one of the board members. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a cold. Um, I, I came to the meeting tonight not to support them. Um, I came to the meeting tonight to see what our community is. Um, I'm horrible at public speaking, too. So, Kathy, I'm right there with you. Um, and I am impressed. I came with a speech. I came to say, you know what? Who cares about Mr. Williams' kids? I know that's selfish, but I don't. I care about my own kids. I have two kids that I want to take to Central Lake Schools, and I am impressed that people came today not to complain about that, but to come and actually have issues that you want to change. Something that's personal, you cannot change. You can change how you want your school. You can change if there's art. You can change if there's a full-time preschool program. You can change that. Focus on that. Don't focus on something that doesn't affect you. Mr. Williams' kids does not affect you. Everything else does. I have two kids that are starting preschool that are 11 weeks old. And I'll tell you what. I want to know how the board is going to change the school to make it so my kids get the best possible education. My kids become the best kids that they can be. And that's what you guys need to focus on too. Don't focus on things that you have no power to change. Focus on the things that you can change. And if I get in an argument with my husband tonight, somebody <laughs> let me stay at their house. <laughs> <laughs> Very good point. Crap. <laughs> Didn't think that one through. I just wanted to say one more thing. When I think about saying that not caring about what Ben's personal life is, I feel like um, Ben's kids not being here is like fifteen thousand dollars. So with two kids, so we run our school with money because we're a business. Even though we're a school system, we're still a, we're still a business. So. If we don't care about Ben's kids being here, are we going to care about, I know Lisa has one kid somewhere else and she has one kid here, so should we not care about the one kid Elisa's that's not here? What about when she decides to take the other kid? If there's somebody else that's not happy and they're like, oh, I'm going to take, so do we not care about those kids too? Because that's how we run our school is money. But we can't focus on just one kid. We can't focus on just two kids. We have to focus on how our programs are going to get better. Focus on that to bring more kids in. So are you saying like, I guess I can't comment on How about this. trying to focus on keeping the kids we got? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm worried about. It's, go, it's happening a little bit quick, you guys. Mm -hmm. You can sit here and love each other all you want, but we're going to run out of money. Sorry. Well, and you know, I think that when push comes to shove, it's not fair. I mean, what everybody said, you were all making so much sense and saying such truth. But the be all and the end all is, we're going to look at that board member and we're going to look at that superintendent and where his kids matters a hell of a lot more than where I send my kid because it's sending a message that for whatever reason, and we don't know the reason, that Central Lake isn't serving his children well. Well, if they're not serving his kids well and he can't fix it, how is he going to help my kid? What's he going to do to help my kid get a good education? And maybe the best place for his kid is at home. That's, that's their choice. But I don't feel that it should be their choice when he's the superintendent of Central Lake Public Schools. I think that he, he is held to a higher accountability because of his position. What a first grader can get away with is a whole lot different than what a fourth grader can get away with. Thank you, Wilson. Okay. I completely agree with Holly that it's like a business. And if your leader isn't in the business, doesn't have his kids in, it's an issue. I'm not from here. I'm from Bel Air. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm like, it was hard enough to send my kids here in the first place. It was more of a convenience because we live in the district. And let alone, I probably wouldn't have even built the house here had I not been given land. So, it's more than just that. It's the kids are behind. And it's like, I have a niece that goes to Traverse City that's the same age as my daughter. They're way ahead of where we are. Not just um, technology, but just what they're learning academically. It's huge. I'm like, 
I told my daughters at the top of her class, and she did terrible on the meets. So there's more than just, I'm like, there's an issue. And I'm like, my kids, I mean, they're fourth and fifth grade, so I don't want to pull them out. This is all the only place they send. But it would be easy for me to send them to Bel Air, because that's where I'm from. But, and if something doesn't happen, which I also have an issue with the fourth and fifth grade not getting grades. They go to sixth grade and all of a sudden they have grades. <clears throat> How do they know where they are even going into that? Where I know Bel Air gets grades in fourth and fifth grade. I just don't think you're preparing them for life. So once we get the money, which is coming, because Cleo Purdy's money is coming, are we going to get all of our stuff that was taken away back? Because that's a, a good amount of money. And I guess I'd like to know that that's going to go to our kids to make this school great and bring back all the stuff that we don't have. And that, you know, once we get that, we can do more things. You know, I heard that there's a biology class that hasn't done one experiment. You know, how is this possible? And who's being held accountable for teachers not making sure our kids are knowing, you know, being taught enough. <coughs> We're hearing it. We're listening. We're taking it in, to be sure. Yes? Do we know how many kids we've lost in the last year? Is it 1, 2, 12, 20? Last year we lost 20. We had a graduating class that was quite a bit higher than the incoming kindergarten class. The same will hold true this year. We're predicting about 18 down. We have 37 seniors, and with kindergarten roundup, we have about 18 incoming. So, but those are lost because of graduation. I'm talking about people that took their kids and sent them somewhere else. How many is that? Is it? I don't have that figure. I was just talking about the roll. Right. Numbers. Right. Well, that's what I think people would. Maybe like to we, we did have some move out last year. We did have some move in. Uh, we had three move in last week. We had one move out the week before. So there is a, typically it's more at the start or at the end of a semester, but there is some fluid movement. So it's not like they're right. flying out the doors. I mean, it doesn't, I don't get that not we're according, losing not tens of kids or anything. Right. I, I thought you, you just said you don't know how many left. But my question is going to be is how do you judge our effectiveness as a school if you truly don't keep track of how many students have left for faults within our school system? I, I would think that'd be an important number to know. I'm sure I just they don't keep have track. Track. You know, you track. track. It just doesn't have the data. Once again, and I believe I'm not paying anything personally, but I, I, would, I would think you would have known that at this meeting because I, I would have. I guarantee you that. If I came to this meeting sitting up there, I would have known how many students have left because I would have expected the question. You know, we we'll hear everything we hear out here. I've had people that have 30 plus years in our community, in our school system, their entire families have graduated from school, from our school system. They've gave a lot to this community. Now they're coming up and saying they're embarrassed by our school system and what happened. And nobody's pointing their finger at anybody. I'm not going to sit here and say it's Ben Williams' fault, it's Tracy's fault. It's, it, no one person can cause this many problems. I'm sure it's happened over years. I think what we're asking as a community, is, is, is step up to the plate and fix it and do it not in a five-year plan. I mean, this is something that has to be addressed. It has to be addressed fast. And nobody's blaming anybody. But we're saying there's problems, and you're the group that luckily gets to fix it, and we get to come and complain to you until you do. <laughs> so good luck. I mean, because that's the way it is. And like, the complaints aren't going to go away. So my question, I hope you can answer this right now tonight, is where are you going from here to address it with the community? Well, Ken, we're not going to address it tonight, um, but we will be addressing it. And, and we appreciate all the things that you've brought to us. There, um, and please remember, too, Ken, that we're all members of the community, and parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles. So we're as concerned as you are. If we weren't concerned, we wouldn't be on this board. And um, believe me, it's not the the most wonderful job in the world. <laughs> you know, we don't have a hundred people running for board. <laughs> but, um, but we, you know, we're, we're doing, um, 
we're looking at all of these things. And we appreciate, this has been wonderful. Bringing the community together like this with us, um, it's, it's been a great experience. Yes. Dustin Rogers. Um, I was brought to the board meeting last Monday um, because of the topic of Ben's family and pulling his kids. Um, that's all I'm concerned about and that's why I'm here. Um, in specific, because um, eventually, like Alyssa, I want Central Lake, I want a family in Central Lake. That's why I've stayed here, that's why I've sacrificed. Um, perception is reality, um, especially as a leader. I'm sorry, but you're a public figure. You're, you're going to get viewed way more than someone who just took their kids out of the school. If you didn't want that job and that kind of criticism from the community, don't have, don't have the superintendent job. I'm sorry, I'm sorry you have family issues, but as a public figure, family issues are going to come to light fairly quickly. And that's just the way it is. If you didn't want that, be a cook, work in a foundry, be an electrician. So, perception being reality, if I walk in here with tattoos on my hands and my neck, the perception is I'm, I'm a bit of a, I'm, I'm a bit of a rough guy, I might be a thug. So I don't have it. Well, you're covering <laughs> But perception is reality. The perception is you took your kids out of the school. And the reality is everyone else sees it. And it's a big deal. Why? Because you're a leader. If you didn't want that leadership job and that kind of reaction, you shouldn't have been in that spot. Not just a leader. Our leader. Yeah, Correct. Exactly. So, and it's not like I'm coming this off the handle. I'm only 27. I don't understand the world fully, but I know enough about leadership. I know about people who trusted me. I've, I've coached enough teams. I've, I've, I was asked by the class uh, two years ago to be their speaker. Um, they look to you. Everything you do affects them. Your home life affects the kids that I coached. That's the way it was. That's, that's the way it is. Perception's reality and taking your kids out of the school. It's a bad reality. Is it permanent or temporary that Mr. Williams' children are not in school? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if he's like burning the building down and taking his kids out, or is it just an issue he's trying to fix and then he's going to bring them back? You know, we don't know all As the... I said in my statement earlier, it's something we're working on uh, as a family with our family issues. So I don't, I don't have an answer right now. That's a good answer. Okay. Um, I think we'll go on then. And um, I, like I said at the beginning, I really appreciate all of you coming. I wish we had this many people at every board meeting. Um, you know? Yes. Sorry. I, want, I have an issue with Ken being embarrassed. About being from Central Lake. I've never been embarrassed to be from Central Lake. I never will be. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of pride in this community. I have a lot of pride in this school. I graduated from here. I retired from here. And I understand both sides of this. You guys have a legal obligation to how you're handling this meeting. And I understand that Ben has his personal life and he has his school life. And I want the people sitting here tonight to realize I sat in on every one of those interviews that the Board of Education did for that position. Ben Williams was heads above the other people that interviewed for that position. And I don't know how many people sitting here were also part of those community meetings that you could have come and sit and watch the board decide who they were going to hire for that position. And with that said, I don't envy them their decision, but they also, Ben also realized when he moved his family into this district how important it is and how important the people of this community think that their leaders, children, should go to our school. Thank you. Okay, at this Sue, point. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, he's going to go. <laughs> sorry. I guess I've, I've, I've talked in front of lots of these people over the years, some as students, some as friends, some as colleagues, um, and I, I'm impressed with all of the messages that were delivered tonight. Uh, our job is going to be finding solutions. And if we want to wallow in the mud, 
and throw stones, we can do that, and it can go on for a long, long time. But I think that the people in this room trust one another that we're looking out for the best of our kids. Now, if there's a suggestion that, of things that we need to do to improve the district, that, that's, that's why we have a Board of Education. Um, and I think that there are people who are working in great faith that they're going to try to do what's best for our kids. I'm proud of this place. I've been here a long time now. My kids have benefited from the people in the room. Um, and I think that kids in a little school that might not have the resources and all those things, our kids aren't afraid to try stuff that some kid in a big school is. They're going to go and they're going to attempt things that they say, you know what, I did it back home, why can't I do it here? We need, we need to take pride in what we have and improve the situation. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to be political in any statement with you folks. We've got to do what's right for all of the kids all of the time. So I want to be a part of that solution, and I think that there are a lot of people in this room that do too. So if you can help us and you can improve what's happening here, do your part and help us. It's a great place to live. It's a better place to have a kid. Thank you. And you know what this has proved to me tonight? We are united as a community. You're here because you think it's you and us, or you and them, or you and them, or whatever. But we're really united as a community because we're all here because we want what's best for kids. We want things to change for our kids. And we all want that. So look around you. We're a united community. And that's a good thing. So I am going to go on now. <laughs> um, we are actually, we're going to uh, move into closed session um, to discuss a personnel matter. And uh, it is 722. Um, I would consider a motion to do that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. the same. We are going to move to the other room for closed session. Um, when we come back, um, we will not be discussing any of the things we've discussed tonight here, um, nor the, the matters that we're discussing in closed session. So if you want to stay, you're perfectly welcome, but actually what we'll probably do after we finish the closed session is come back here and um, we'll come out of closed session, we'll come back here and um, adjourn the meeting, basically. Can I have four more questions? When, when seriously do you plan on this stuff? I, mean, I think we want to know. We want to be in attendance. We want to be helped, like Quinn said. We're all concerned. We all want to come. We want to be part of the solution. But if you can't tell us when you plan on doing it, how do we plan our schedule for attendance? Well, one of the things we are going to do is uh, is look at everybody, talk, look look together, talk about what we what you've all brought to us tonight and look at some solutions. Can I tell you when that will be that we'll talk about it? No, not right now. Can I tell you we'll put it on our our Facebook page when we have our next meeting? Sure. We'll do that. So is your intent to discuss it at your next meeting? Some of it, I'm sure. Okay. I just hope you move forward because I just don't want to see you get And we are up. planning on moving forward. That's so I just want to thank you all too. Um, I started that last week with the way I wanted to end this. Thank you all so much for all your time. And I know it's a thankless, thankless job what you're doing. That's really hard. Well, we really appreciate it. Everybody out there, okay? Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for coming, everyone. Thank you. I learned my lesson too. <laughs>